Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today we are going to be focusing on more PS3 games you should probably pick up from the PS3 store before it closes on July 2nd, 2021. Now, not only are we going to be focusing on, on games, but we're going to be focusing on add-ons to certain games as well. Games you might own and you might not know about certain add-on content, uh, epilogues they added to the game. So uh, this will be like your last chance to get that stuff if you want it. Also, before we get into the video, I want to give a shout out to my buddy Jimmy Hoppa. He did an awesome video on the PlayStation Store for Japan. Uh, lots of cool PS1 games, expensive games, hard to find games uh, on that list that he made. So definitely check out that video. I will leave a link in the description and somewhere up here on the top somewhere. But anyways, guys, let's get into the games. All right, so we're going to start off the list here with Sega Vintage Collection Monster World. This comes with three games uh, for the price of $10. Now, this is a good deal. It comes with Monster Boy and Monster Land, Monster Boy and Monster World, and my personal favorite, Monster World 4. Um, and this is actually getting a remake pretty soon, if you guys don't know. But uh, I believe this is the first official English translation for this game. There's a, there's a, there's a fan translation out for it on the, the original hardware, but um, I think this was the official English release for the game, so uh, pretty cool. But if you like platform RPGs, uh, this bundle will be right up your alley. All right, so Ratchet Deadlocked. Um, this is actually the fourth Ratchet and Clank game, even though the Clank is taken out of the title. This pretty much takes uh, the platforming out of the, the games and gives, it, gives you pretty much all fighting. It's pretty fun. I didn't really get into it back in the day, you know, I didn't really see it advancing the story or not, but still, it was pretty cool they tried to put this together, but it is the only HD version of this game out there, so you might want to get it before the store closes, if you're into this game. Alright, next up we got Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Uh, pretty much take the Far Cry 3 formula, uh, throw a little 1980s era in there, and um, you got this game. Uh, pretty awesome. It, it just If you've seen a lot of 80s movies like Terminator, uh, Beverly Hills Cop, stuff like that, um, you will know what to kind of expect here with the cliches in this game. It's pretty awesome. It's like watching a 1980s action movie, except, you know, you got to play the game. But anyways, guys, uh, definitely check this one out if you haven't already. So if you're a Sonic the Hedgehog fan that's always dreamt of the day that you might get a Sonic fighting game, well, here it is, Sonic Fighters. Um, not going to really go into this one too much. I mean, what you see is what you get. <laughs> but hey, you know, um, yeah, maybe you'll want to check this one out. I don't know. But uh, for me, I thought it was... Um... Okay, next game. Stardust HD was a really cool shoot 'em up game I played back in the day. Uh, this is one of the first games I believe like uh, was available on the PlayStation Network back in the day. So seeing it still here is pretty cool. It kind of brought back memories and everything like that. But if you like extreme shooters, uh, you definitely check this one out. Ratchet and Clank: The Quest for Booty is the second Ratchet and Clank future game. Uh, it only got an official release, I believe, in Japan and uh, PAL territories, um, but that uh, physical copy of the game is going up in price, so this might be your best option if you want to get in the game. Also, to be honest about this game, it feels like it's more of an, of an expansion pack. The game doesn't last that long. It's probably like three, maybe four hours at the most, um, probably even shorter than that, so I don't know if this was really worth getting a physical for, but hey, for those collectors out there, they might want to get it, but hey, if you want to get it on the cheap, definitely download it. All right, next up we have Infamous Festival of Blood. If you played any of the Infamous games, you know this is like a sandbox adventure game. Really a lot of fun, very interesting. Festival of Blood expands on the second game's story. And especially with the ending I got in that game, I felt really bad. So it was nice to get this expansion pack. But this is only available as a download. Uh, it does say it's available in the Infamous collection pack, but that's a download code that you want to use before July 2nd. But you like what you're seeing here, uh, definitely check this one out. Battle Fantasia is another cool fighting game. Uh, what I heard about this game is that it actually inspired the direction they went with Street Fighter 4 with the graphics and everything like that. But uh, anyways, going to the game, very cool versus fighting game, uh, very colorful, very like quirky and everything like that. I feel like this game is like a good starter game for maybe people that want to get into fighting games. I like that it's a fighting game that doesn't take itself too seriously, you know, it's just a lot of fun. It doesn't have that many characters to choose from, but that's totally fine with me because 
not having that many characters to choose from kind of like balances the game out pretty good but anyways check this one out if you like what you're seeing here next up we have resident evil the umbrella chronicles and the dark side chronicles uh, both of these games kind of go over the first, I want to say, first four Resident Evil games. A lot of fun. These are rail shooters, by the way, so make sure you have your move controllers ready. If you don't have a move controller, that's okay, too. You can use the regular control pad as well. But these games give you like an arcade feel of going through the previous Resident Evil games. They're really a lot of fun, and it's cool kind of how they kind of like redo the story a little bit going through these games. Scourge Outbreak is a game reminiscent to, I would say, Gears of War. If you like those kind of third-person shooter games, uh, you'll know what to expect here. Not not as crazy as the Gears of War games. You know, Scourge is pretty much, I would say, a simplified version of those games. But still, it's a pretty fun game. And me and Marcus actually played this online, I want to say it was about three years ago, and we ended up beating the game. This is a very obscure game, and I mean... Pretty much nobody ever talks about this one, but I think it's an interesting game that you guys might want to check out on the store. You can play up to four people online via the story's co-op, so that's always a nice feature. Um, me and Marcus, I think we had a couple people join us back in the day, but I'm not really sure. I can't really remember too much about it. But anyways, I think this is one you guys might want to check out. Alright, so now we're going to look at some more fighting games. Battle Fantasia was just the appetizer, so now we're looking at Skullgirls Encore. Now, I've been following Skullgirls for years, and I know the game is on other systems now, you know, updated versions, but still, the version that's on the PSN for PS3 is still a good version of the game to have, especially if you only own a PS3. Um, I followed this game back when it was kickstarted back in the day, and I remember all the funding it got and the characters they added to it. I was just really, really fun to be a part of at the time, so... Um, Definitely one of those fighting games that's a throwback to old school with the way the animation is for the characters. Uh, my favorite characters are Pain Will and Parasol. Um, I know Pain Will is probably like the weakest character in the game, but I just I love I love how she plays, so definitely a cool character. But anyways guys, check this one out. And next up we have Arcana Heart 3 Love Max, another awesome fighting game. Uh, this game is actually going up in price uh, for the physical, so I thought this might be a better way for people to get this game. Uh, very good game, great animations, lots of fun. You know the deal when it comes to fighting games. I'll never steer you wrong. And next up, we have King of the Fighters 13, which is an awesome, awesome game in the series. This is the end of the Ash Crimson Saga, so very important game in the series. But this game was actually published by Atlas, so there's not that really... They didn't really do a big print run for the game, so... And now the game is sought after, so it's going for prices from 80 to 100 bucks from what I've seen. So the digital version, I believe it's under $30. I definitely think this is a good way to get the game. And also another thing is when you're looking for the game in the store, for some odd reason, when you type King of the Fighters 13, it'll come up with King of the Fighters 12. So you have to go, you have to scroll down the list and look for King of the Fighters 13. It's really weird. Maybe that just happened for me. The PlayStation Store is acting weird, but... Who knows what's going on. But anyways, uh, if you have trouble finding it, that's how you do it. And also to be clear, I'm not recommending King of the Fighters 12. You know, if you buy that, you know, you're on your own. But um, I'm only recommending on this part, King of the Fighters 13. I also wanted to mention the Undernight in Birth, you know. Um, I don't know what the physical is going for this game, but it is on the PlayStation Store if you guys are interested in it. I think this is a very well fleshed out fighting game. I, I don't think it gets enough credit, you know, for what it is. It's really, really good, and it really feels like a, a full package, you know. A lot of fighting games that come out today, you know, they're all this add-on content, you know, season passes and stuff like that. Not under Night and Birth. It knows what it wants to be, and it puts it out there, so definitely check this one out. Alright, so before we get into the add-on content for certain games, we're just going to pretty much recap the previous PS3 games I talked about in my other video. So if you guys haven't seen that video, I'm not going to leave a link in there. I'll just add them to this video so you'll have like a big plethora of PS3 games you can buy from the store. Beyond Good and Evil HD, a fantastic game that got overlooked when it first came out on the PS2, GameCube, and Xbox back in the day. It's something that I think a lot of people still need to get into. 
Um, it has a sequel coming out pretty soon, so uh, hopefully that will we'll get more information on that. The next game here, Hydrophobia. I talked about this game on my channel a lot. Uh, I really like this game, even though it didn't meet its potential. But for two dollars, I think it's definitely worth picking up on the system. Next game, DuckTales Remastered. Now we know what happened with DuckTales Remastered when it first got delisted. A lot of people were going after the physical copy of the game, and now that those are—I'm not saying they're hard to get now, but you know, if you want a digital version of the game, now's the time to get it. Uh, they did a really good job on this game. They brought a lot of the voice actors back. It was just a really good experience. Um, and I really wish they did part two, but hey, I'll take what I could get with this one. Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, a really good fighting game. Probably one of the only Persona games I'll play these days. Um, really unique game made by Arc System. They did a really fantastic job on this one, and not a lot of people know it exists. So this is on the network as well. Next game here, Castle of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse. This is a remake of the Genesis game. And I, they did a really good job, especially with the narration of the game. It's pretty easy compared to the old the old version, but still definitely worth getting. Next game, we have Sonic 4 Part 2. This game is one of my favorite Sonic games, believe it or not. And one of the reasons I really liked it, because it was a true sequel to Sonic CD, which is probably my favorite Sonic game of all time. Yeah, it, it was missing a couple things in it. You know, they could have did a better job with certain things. But hey, still a pretty good game. Definitely check this one out. Next game here is Amy, your survival horror game. I talked about this on Jason's channel years ago. And I probably shouldn't have because this game is not as good as I thought it was back when I first played it. Uh, has a lot of problems with it, but it is a survival horror game. And I give all games survival horror a little bit of love. Uh, what I did like about the game is that it had like um, it was a nice story of a woman trying to save a little girl. So I'll just say that. But it is what a survival horror game that is an escort mission. So just remember that going in it. Then of course we have Sonic CD, which is still available on the network. Uh, this is a cool version of the game because you can actually uh, mix the soundtracks up from the Japanese version and the U.S. version. Which ones you want to hear during gameplay? So there's that option as well. 1942 Joint Strike. Uh, this is one of the very first shoot 'em ups I had on my PS3. A lot, not a lot of people really know it exists on there. It's, it's one of the older titles that was on the PlayStation Network. Still here. Uh, you can play online with friends. So a shoot 'em up you can play online with people. That's awesome. Um, yeah, something for you guys to try out. Next up, Street Fighter 3 Online Edition. Uh, this is probably my favorite version of Street Fighter 3. It, they they, they kind of tried to give the game like a like a I would say a coat of paint, I would say. And I love the, like, the soundtrack on here. I just like how they mix things up with the, the options you could do, like certain tasks you could do while you're trying to fight your opponents. Very cool. Uh, Street Fighter 3 is my favorite. Uh, well, I'd say Street Fighter 3 Fight for the Future, which is the third installment of the Street Fighter 3 uh, games. Um, my favorite Street Fighter game of all time. So uh, definitely, I say, think you should pick this one up. Next up, you have Dungeons & Dragons Collection. It comes with Dungeons & Dragons Tower of Doom and Shadows of Mystara. Very good beat-em-up games. Um, old school Capcom. Uh, definitely something I think a lot of people need to try out if they haven't already. Then we have Chaos Code, uh, what I would call a hidden gem fighter. Um, an updated version came out on the PS4, but still I thought it was, it was just good to know, let people know about this version that's on the PS3. So it's still there, still a really good game. Uh, something I think definitely a lot of fighting fans should check out. Then we had Double Dragon Neon. Yes, I know Double Dragon Neon actually came out for the Switch recently, but still, for people who want to get it on the PS3 with those trophies. And just a, like a really cool, funny take on the Double Dragon series. Um, it's kind of like a reimagination of the first game, I would say. And I think WayForward did a really good job on this one. I'm glad, well, I'm hoping someday that this game actually gets a physical release, but you know, who knows? All right, so now we have Hard Corpse Uprising. Um, it's a damn shame this game has not got released in a physical format. And you know, I just feel like this is pretty much the only way to get the game right now. So add it to your account. So. Here's hoping one day, but this is probably one of the best Contra games I've ever played. Um, the story is compelling, the animation is just well done. It's just everything about this game. Like I just, I just feel like this is awesome, and not a lot of people know it exists, unfortunately. But hopefully, um, you guys will spread the word. 
Um, next up is Daytona USA. I think this is probably one of the best versions of the game out there. It originally came out on a Saturn, but this one is pretty much arcade perfect. So if you like racing games, uh, Daytona USA is still around. One of the coolest games on the network is actually um, House of the Dead Part 4. That has not been released on anything else. I believe it's only ex it's exclusive to the PS3 and arcades. So uh, definitely uh, something you want to check out. And also, uh, House of the Dead 3 is on the PlayStation Network as well. So you can kind of get them in a bundle, I believe. All right, so next game is Fast Draw Showdown. This is a laser uh, disc game from back in the day. And it's probably it's one of those FMV games where you aim at the screen and kind of shoot enemies. It's pretty funny. Uh, if you remember that NES game called Wild Gunman, you kind of know what to expect here. You have to use your move controller to kind of aim and shoot at the uh, enemies on the screen. It's, it's hilarious stuff, but it's here on the network if you guys want to try it out. Next up, we have Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 on the network. Um, I don't know which one I'm, a, I'm more of a fan of. I feel like I'm more of a fan of Adventure Part 1, but I love the story in Part 2. Both really fun games. Uh, both are their director's cuts version, so I believe they're like the uh, GameCube version in high uh, definition or whatnot. But I could be wrong about that, not really sure. But anyways, they're on here. They're fun games. Definitely check them out. Galaga Legions DX. I didn't know too much about this game, but I did like the footage I saw here, so I wanted to go ahead and include it in the list. Next game here is Pac-Man Championship DX. Um, this game is freaking awesome. This is the game that got me in, back into Pac-Man. Uh, definitely check this game out. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the Rocket Knight adventure games, well, here is Rocket Knight, uh, the, the, so, the, the last game in the series so far, uh, a direct sequel to the Genesis games. Uh, pretty much um, another company picked up the helm and tried to make a good Rocket Knight game. It's up to you to, to decide if it's a good game or not. I actually enjoyed it and beat the game, but... Uh, I don't know if as many people enjoyed it like I did. Next is Nights Into Dreams. Uh, this version of the game actually comes with Christmas Nights, so just remember that. Um, you get kind of like two games in one in a way. Um, if you know about Christmas Nights, you know, that was a kind of a big deal for me back in the day, you know, with the whole Saturn clock issue and all that stuff. But um, definitely a really fun game. Uh, Nights was lucky enough to get a sequel on the Wii. But we haven't heard from the series since, so, you know, and the, and the Saturn version of the game is really expensive, so, all right, it's expensive as far as I know, but this is the cheapest option to get the game right now, so check this one out. Castlevania Harmony of Despair. Uh, this is a Metroidvania Castlevania game, but you can play up to four players online, which is freaking awesome. Uh, it has its own little story, um, lots of remixed uh, music and everything like that. Uh, you go visit older levels for older games. Um, it's just not a lot of people know this game exists, unfortunately. And this is another one of those games that needs a physical release. And we have Mars Warlogs. Um, <laughs> I remember when this game came out, and I'll compare it to this. Think of Mass Effect if Mass Effect was a beat em up game. That's the only way I can describe this game. Yeah, it has somewhat high production values. They really was, they, they poured their hearts out into this game, but. It's up to you to decide if it was really worth it. And now we have Rain for the PS3, also known as Lost in Rain. Um, this is a fantastic game, and the physical copy of this game, the Asia English version, is so expensive now. You know, I think, I'm, I believe it goes from 500 to like $1,000. I'm not really sure I could be off on that, but it's definitely worth getting the digital copy over the physical if you don't want to drop that type of money on it. Um, this is one of the first games I reviewed on my channel. Uh, still to this day one of my favorite PS3 games uh, It's really unique and it's kind of I, I want to call it adventure Survival adventure game I would say because the horror it it may not be like scary for some people But it is creepy in some points because you're being stalked by a monster that you can only see in the rain so um, it, It's really unique. It changes up. It just it's just one of those games. It's just I don't know It's just really unique definitely check this one out and that's now we're going to get into the add-in content for certain games. Fear 3, a fantastic first-person horror game. Uh, this was the first Fear game that was actually co-op during the story mode. Very cool. Well, originally when this game was brand new, it came with a pass to be able to play more multiplayer modes. One of those modes was called F and Run. 
and F and Run is pretty insane. It's like um, it's pretty much like uh, if you've seen the movie The Fog by John Carpenter, anything that got caught in the fog was pretty much dead. Uh, there is a fog chasing you while you're fighting enemies, and you have to try to get to checkpoints, and it's very, very tense, especially when you're playing with friends. It's definitely a multiplayer game that I recommend for people to try out, um, and most of, most people will probably get Fear 3 used because it's not being sold on the online store anymore, I don't believe. But if you decide to pick this game up, you're in for a good time. And next up, we have Castlevania Lords of Shadow. This is the Castlevania game that pretty much plays like a God of War type game. It's got quick time events, lots of action, cool adventure tropes. Um, they think I think they did a good job on this game. And the game does have two DLC packs that kind of expand the story of the fall of Gabriel Belmont. Just wanted to mention that because there's no complete version of this game that, that exists as a physical. So I just wanted to put that out there in case people wanted to see the content that comes with this DLC. I think it's actually worth it. It actually uh, pushes the story more and it leads into Castlevania Lords of Shadow Part 2. And since we're talking about Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2, it has a prequel DLC pack where you get to play as a new character. Now, I personally haven't played it yet, but um, I'm, I'm very interested in, in checking it out. So, I'm a big fan of American McGee's uh, Alice Returns, and I love the original game as well. A lot of people don't know that the original game is on the PlayStation Network. Um, it's actually free if you have the uh, American McGee's Alice Returns game. You can download it for free. Um, but I don't know how much it costs if you just buy the game standalone. It's probably like 5 to $10, but I think it's worth it if you want to check that one out as well. Next up, we have Azura's Wrath. This is pretty much a cinematic beat-em-up game. Pretty crazy, but the thing about this game is that in order to really get the epilogue in it, you have to download it. And um, it only costs two dollars, but still, just to let everybody know, if you want a more complete experience with this game, you, know, you have to download the packs that are, are still available. Then we have Dead Space 3. Uh, me and my buddy Joel beat this game recently, and um, <laughs> I, I kind of surprised Joel with this after we beat the game. He thought it was over. But I told him there was an epilogue that is downloadable. I believe it's called Awakening. And um, in order to really get that complete experience, you gotta download it. But um, just letting everybody know it's out there. Max Payne 3 is a fantastic game, single player and multiplayer. Playing this game online is a lot of fun, but um, there is DLC that you can use for add on content. So just wanna let everybody know about that. Now, Metal Gear Rising is one of the best action games out there, and a lot of people did not know that this game had DLC that was free for it. This DLC are prequel chapters, um, prequel chapters for Blade Wolf and the awesome Jetstream Sam. Um, their stories are very badass, and I love Jetstream Sam. I really feel like he's the, the real hero of Metal Gear Rising, but kind of like an anti-hero in a way. But uh, DLC is free, and I don't know if it was really promoted back in the day, because I had only found out about it a couple years ago. I didn't even know it existed, so just wanted to put it out there. The, le the levels that you play in this are really fun. Jetstream Sam plays way different from uh, Raiden. Uh, Blade Wolf, uh, obviously he plays differently, but it's just cool to kind of see their prequel stories in the game. Alright guys, so that's going to do it for the add-on content. You know, hopefully you guys, you know, look at some of the stuff and say check the store and see if some of your games might have some DLC that you might want to add to it. You know, it's going to be annoying once the store is gone and that we don't have access to it. You know, it's just like, it's just annoying pretty much. But now we're just going to go over the leftover games that I forgot to mention earlier before we end the video. September 19th. My name is CR, on site of the Matheson family farm, continuing my investigation in Charlie's disappearance. Let's see what we can turn up. Alright guys, so that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully you guys find something on the store that you might want before the store closes. You know, I know it's annoying trying to shop on the PlayStation 3 store, you know, trust me, I, I've been there. But, you know, just keep trying to get stuff that you want, even, even though it might not, you might get an error or something like that. 
Um, usually, I try to wait till like the traffic dies down on it. You know, at nighttime, mostly no one's on there trying to buy anything. So they haven't done maintenance on the store in a long ass time, and you guys can tell. And so just be aware of that. But anyways, guys, um, I, I will possibly do a Vita and PSP video probably within the next two weeks. I'm not sure. But Jason actually might do one, so definitely look out for that video. I'm excited to see that one. Me and Jason talk all the time about PlayStation stuff, so we got a lot of ideas that we could put out there for you guys. But um, that's it for this video, everyone. Thank you for watching. Radical Reggie, and I will see you all later.